Hey guys, how's it going? Tool Cruise here, and welcome to another bike commuting vlog here in Japan. Today, we're gonna to be talking about fall commuting and winter commuting. So what clothes do you wanna wear? What clothes are good to wear? What do I recommend? I've been getting this question a lot on the channel recently as the temperature starts to get cooler, and we're a bit behind a lot of you other countries out there here in Japan. The temperature here still isn't too bad. This week is actually my first week riding in kind of fallish clothes, so I got my windbreaker on right now, but I know in some other parts of the world we got fans from all over the world, which is really cool to see. And some of you guys saying it's already super cold there, like 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's pretty ridiculous to me right now. Even though I'm from Michigan where it is that cold this time of the year, I've lived in Japan so long now that I've acclimated to the warmer climate, and now it's a, it's about 16 degrees Celsius and I'm feeling pretty cold. But you'll feel that way if you go through a whole summer of 40 degrees Celsius with 100% humidity. You lose your strength in the cold weather, but I actually really like this weather, so I'm really happy to make this video and share what I know with you guys. So there's a lot to talk about, and we've got a nice, beautiful day today, some nice weather, so join along on today's commute, and we're gonna be talking about some different clothing options for fall riding and winter riding while we're at it. We might as well do a bit of both. I've got a couple different clothing items that I have personally that I'll show you guys. I'll add them over the video while I'm riding so I can show you guys. It's better than me sitting in front of the camera and talking the whole time, right? So if you prefer these riding vlogs compared to me just sitting in front of a camera, be sure to give the video a like. It really helps support the video and the channel. Oh, by the way, we've got the local crew here cleaning up that's one of the great things about Japan. I mentioned this in a previous video. These people are out dedicated, cleaning their areas, everything really pristine here in Japan. It's one of the really good things about living here. But you can see if we get closer here, we're starting to get some leaves fall to the ground, but still we got plenty of green up there, so we're not even really close to entering the main fall season yet. That's not gonna be here until mid-November. But anyway, let's get into today's topic. So clothing that you wanna wear and we might as well start from the bottom up. So we'll start with personal wear first, starting with the bottom, your shoes. So the fall, generally depending on how severe your fall gets, you may be fine just wearing your normal cycling shoes. I prefer to commute and wear my mountain bike shoes. So I use my same shoes that I'm wearing now. Once it gets a bit colder though, you'll wanna cover your shoes with some either toe covers or full shoe covers. And there's different styles that you can get here. You can get some pretty light, more aero style shoe covers, which are kind of like a windbreaker and they just help warm it up a little bit. But as it gets colder, you can get some more serious winter style shoe covers and you'll really want a pair of those if you're gonna be riding in the winter. I don't have anything on like that right now though. Still not nearly that cold here. Moving up onto the legs, there's actually quite a few options here. So you can get some leg warmers, you can get knee warmers, you can get different materials of your leg or knee warmers. You can get fleece, you can get wool, you can get pretty much anything that you want. We actually have some pretty cool knee warmers, custom design. Only two made in the world are custom Taiyaki knee warmers, and we love these. I've actually also got a pair of sneaker shorts, so the kind of annoying thing about knee warmers and leg warmers is you have to put them on, take them off separately. But that's actually a nice thing, because if you get overheated, you can take them off if you don't need them anymore. The other option is some sneaker shorts or full-on bib tights that go all the way down. The disadvantage being, of course, that you can't take those off if you get too hot, but it is a little bit more simple to manage. Got everyone out here in the morning commute. For me personally, I've got my sneakers on today. My McDonald's sneakers, love these guys. I definitely recommend going with some warmer materials, so some thicker materials as you get riding in the fall. It makes a huge difference, but yeah, I understand that not everyone can go out and buy a whole bunch of different uh, cycling specific clothes for the winter and for the summer. So next up, let's go on to the upper body. So I'm actually wearing my normal cycling jersey that I always wear, so the same jersey I'll wear in the summer. And the good thing about that is you can just wear your normal summer jerseys and then just cover them with a separate jacket or even a separate long sleeve jersey of some sort. So again, there's just infinite options here. 
The windbreakers are really nice for days like today where it's not too cold, it's a bit windy, and it helps you stay a bit more comfortable so you can go a bit harder without having to worry about overheating. I've actually also got a nice fleece long sleeve tubo cruise jersey, and that jersey is actually a little bit too warm, so if I go a little bit hard to do some efforts on this commute, I'll be heating up a little bit too much in that jersey right now. And you can just, and you can wear long sleeve jerseys just as it is, so you can stay a little bit cooler, or you can wear the short sleeve jersey underneath the long sleeve jersey. It's really up to you what combination you want to have. And for me, right now and today, I'm just wearing a normal short sleeve jersey with the windbreaker. Nice and simple. I can take off the windbreaker if I get too hot, which might actually happen because as you can see, the sun's getting stronger. And when I start my commute, it's basically the coldest point of the day. And halfway through the commute, it'll be a, a lot warmer. So I actually end up taking this jacket off right now at this point halfway through my ride because I get too hot. But today's a bit cooler than it has been in other days. So I might actually not have to take it off. So every day is different and you just got to kind of figure out what works for you. You can of course wear a normal jacket. Actually for my first few years living here in Japan, I just wore a normal sports windbreaker. And the great thing about those, you can get them from Uniqlo here for like 3000 yen. It's way cheaper than any sports brand and it works just as good honestly. It might be a little bit less cycling fashionable, but it does the job and you can save some money there. And of course, in addition to all the jackets we've talked about so far, you can add on like a normal winter jacket, a winter cycling jacket, and even just a normal winter jacket. Like if that's all you have, there's no need to buy like a cycling specific winter jacket if you're perfectly comfortable. Oh man, check this out. These guys are out here all the time. This is the first time I've seen them on this tall one. That's crazy. That was really cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah, these guys are out here on their unicycles every day practicing. They're out here normally on these sides and love their dedication. They're out here literally every day. That's one of the cool things about doing this daily commute is you, come to, you sometimes see the same people over and over again at the same times every day. It's pretty interesting. Continuing on the extension of the upper body, next we have our hands. And I actually am not wearing gloves today. And I kind of regretted it at the beginning of my ride because it was a bit colder than I was expecting. And I like to hold off as long as I can. I get a lot of comments on the channel like, Cruz, why don't you wear gloves? And it's just a personal preference. Like I overheat way too easily. I naturally have a pretty high body temperature. So I try to wear as minimal clothing as possible. My idea being that if I'm cold, I can just ride harder and warm up. But the opposite is not true. If you're too hot, you can't always take off clothing or it's a bit of a pain to take off the clothing. So I don't wear gloves right now, but again, there's tons of options. Short sleeve, short finger gloves, lightweight, long finger gloves, uh, more severe style winter gloves, lobster style gloves, the options are endless. And actually for those of you who are in really cold areas, like in Michigan, I used to commute and ride in the winter in like negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And we had these bar end mitts, which are really nice. They fit a lot easier on a mountain bike, I think, but I think nowadays there's also some road bike, road bar options as well. So bar mitts are a lifesaver if you're living in an area with some negative temperatures. Thankfully, it doesn't quite get that cold here in Japan. Moving up onto the neck area, once it gets a bit colder, I'll start wearing like either a scarf or there's specific lightweight neck warmers that you can wear for cycling. In the deep of winter, I'll wear like a normal winter neck warmer and those are perfect. They keep me nice and warm. But until then, while I don't want to get too hot, the lightweight neck warmers are really nice as well. Or you can get like a lightweight scarf. Again, you don't always need to have cycling specific stuff, especially for the cool weather riding. Generally, you can find another solution that works of something that you already have lying around. And I mean, half of you guys who are bike commuting, one of the big reasons I'm sure is saving money. So no point in blowing money on things that you don't need. Next up, going up to the helmet. So this is another thing that might change 
depending on how cold it gets where you are. Like if you have a super breathable summer style racing helmet, you might not want to be using that in the winter. It's not going to give you any wind protection and it's just going to be really cold with all that ventilation. But in general, with the colder temperatures, you don't need as much ventilation up there. So if you can get a solid cover helmet, that might be nicer to help keep you warm. Of course, you can also warm your head with some extra layers in between your head and the helmet, like either it be a hat or ear wub or ear covers, anything. There's a couple different varieties there. Generally though, until it gets really cold, I'm usually okay with just some ear warmers. They do the job and Again, if I'm a little cold, I'm just motivated to ride a little bit harder to warm up. And overall, I'm a big fan of, overall, I'm a big fan of riding in the fall, riding in the early winter. I love the cooler temperatures, much prefer it to the hot summers. And especially for bike commuting, cause you don't have to worry about like sweating when you get to work. And a lot of it really comes down to the choices that you make. If you wear too many layers, you're gonna sweat. If you wear too little layers, you're gonna be cold, but you'll be motivated to ride harder. But once you find the nice recipe of how many layers works for you and what's comfortable for you, it's a really comfortable experience. Some other final points I should mention. I tend to wear more clear lens glasses in the fall and winter commutes, and that's mainly because the sun's not always as strong and also because it gets darker a lot earlier. So that's kind of something that's a mix of a good and bad thing, and that is the darker riding. So sometimes I really like riding in the dark. It's nice and comfortable. There's less people out. So in general, I really like night commuting. I feel really comfortable while I do it. It's especially nice because no one's out on the roads and if they are coming, you can usually see them a bit easier with the lights and it's just a bit more relaxing. The only thing I have to say about that though really is it does get a little bit tiring after a while. So after a couple months of riding in the dark, it gets a little bit old and you want it to be over quickly. So I do enjoy it, but there's a limit to how much I enjoy it before it gets old, if that makes sense. And that's another thing I should mention for this video, and that is your lights. Cause if you're commuting in the winter and fall, there's gonna be way less daylight and you're gonna need some lights or some materials to make you more visible. So as you can see, I'm wearing an actually high visibility with reflection windbreaker and definitely always like to have these on when I'm commuting at night. I feel a lot safer and especially the lights. According to the cycling law in Japan, you actually have to have lights on your bikes. And really, if you're riding in the dark, you should definitely have lights on your bike. Since I'm riding on this more isolated path, there's really no lights out here. Like there's no lights along the path. There's no cars out here or buildings to light up the path. So I actually need a little bit of a stronger light. I've got this bad boy, this Nightcore BR35. I made a review video talking about all the different lights I've had. I've tried a bunch of different lights over the last five years and I introduced them all in a review video a while back. I'll link that up here in case you're interested, but you definitely want to have a good set of lights. It's also a good idea to have a rear light as well. I don't need it honestly so much on this path, but I definitely make sure I have it on when I go on the main roads. And if you're cycling mainly on main roads, you don't need necessarily as strong of a light. So. I was perfectly fine with a weaker light when I was riding mainly on city roads, but now that I'm riding on these completely dark roads, I'm really happy to have this guy and the charge lasts for the full week. It's really nice. So if you don't mind the extra weight, definitely recommend getting a nice beefy light. It's a bit pricey, but I'm really happy I have it now. Some other pro tips before we end the video. One of the hardest parts that I find in riding in colder temperatures is keeping your hands warm and keeping your feet warm. Everything else is pretty easy, especially your core. Like if you're riding with a backpack and a jacket, that's gonna insulate all that heat really well and your core is gonna stay really nice and warm. The hardest part is always the hands and the feet. So there's a couple different ways to get around this. One of the more expensive ways and most effective ways is to buy like heated pads. There's some cheap ones here in Japan called Kaido 
and they are everywhere in the winter like people wear them multiple times every day and I really kind of don't like this because I feel like it creates a lot of extra unnecessary waste like you can't recycle that stuff so and it just wastes money in my opinion so I try not to use those I like to use some cheaper alternative solutions and one of my solutions is plastic bags so if you wrap your feet so if you actually wear a plastic bag kind of like a sock so basically you just put it over your feet before you put it into your shoe it adds an extra layer of insulation which helps keep your feet warm and if you don't have the money to dish out on a nice pair of shoe covers you can make your own with some extra old socks some extra old thick like soccer socks or something like that just cut out the bottom you got a space for your pedals and if you do the extra insulated layer of the bag it works really good and it costs you literally no money so that's what i did throughout my high school and college years when i was cycling in the winter to save money another thing i mentioned with the handlebar options is the bar mitts those are a bit more pricey but they seem to be getting cheaper lately with more options available but those things are a lifesaver if you're commuting in the cold every day that is by far the simplest solution just keep them on your bike and i guess uh, that's one of the nice things about living in japan is you don't have to worry about theft if you have a safe place to put your bike but if you're living in a dangerous area where they'll just steal everything off your bike that's maybe a bit more of a pain to deal with but again it all just depends on you and your circumstances what you can do what you want to do another story you guys might find funny is when i used to train in the winter like i used to train really seriously as some people know on this channel train and race really seriously and i made it my goal multiple years to ride every day like in the winter season so from january 1st i would ride at least once every day i would do a lot of double sessions too a lot of it inside but a lot of it outside as well especially the base miles and it's really cold in michigan in the winter so everyone's out on their mountain bike single speeds and i would actually use my snowboard helmet and snowboard goggles and that would help me stay really nice and warm and comfortable so really you don't always need the cycling specific stuff just the cheapest option is sometimes the best option so just use whatever you have make it work find a solution that works and just enjoy the ride i'm really happy to see a lot of comments on this channel to see that these videos are helping motivate some of you guys to ride to work so i definitely want to continue making videos like this and hopefully help inspire more people to get out and ride their bikes to work speaking of work though it's almost that time so we're gonna sign off for today i hope you guys enjoyed this topic found it useful and if you have any other questions videos that you'd like me to make in the future be sure to write your comments down below let me know what ideas you want me to go over and i'll be sure to make a video about it in the future i'm really excited for all the leaves to turn and show you guys some beautiful fall cycling here in Japan. But until that time, stay safe and enjoy the ride. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time here on Tewa Cruise.